It's like Sylvia, when you were talking yesterday and you were just pouring your heart out about the stuck point that you have with this neighbor and how, you know, you really know that there's a lesson there. You know that there's a forgiveness lesson, but the temptation to blame, the temptation to, to find this neighbor wrong was like this huge call. It was, it's like what that is, what that temptation to blame that neighbor is, is this, this insidious belief in attack. You know, the belief that attack is real. It's, the Holy Spirit knows it's, there is no such thing. The mind cannot attack. You can't attack God. You can't separate from God. The Holy Spirit and Jesus know that attack is absolutely impossible. And that's what you're praying for. You're praying, reach me, show me, help me, I need to know this. But this insidious, it's like a little gnat or a little fly that's in your face, and you're just like, get away. This is not my purpose, but it keeps coming and coming like a little gnat. It wants to land on your eyebrow. It's on your lip. It's up your nose. This little gnat, you know, you're trying to get it away, but it just keeps coming back. That is what this call for love is about. We have to learn to join with the Holy Spirit and Jesus to see past the behaviors, see past the voice of this neighbor when she called you on the phone, to see past all the appearances of, of everything she said or her tone of voice and all those nuances that the ego is grabbing on to build its case and attack. And you have to realize that you're doing a great thing for you and for the whole universe to connect, to find that purpose of forgiveness. You're doing this for everyone and everything in all of history. This isn't just about Sylvia. This is for everyone. And to find this purpose, you have to be willing, we'll say, to either be right or happy. You either, I'm going to put it in a context, I'm not talking about personally right. I'm not talking about Sylvia being right. You either have to be right about the way that the ego set up this dark night world, this whole dark world of time and space. You either have to be right about the way the ego set it all up, or happy that it's not true, that it could never be true, that it has no reality whatsoever. God did not create it. It could, it could never even have a semblance of anything. There is no gnat. That gnat that seems to not go away was not created by God. God is the God of love, pure love. So here's the key. This is going to be the key. My key of the morning is when we talk about this world and how the ego is the death wish that generated this world, here's what Jesus says. He says, what you believe, believe, you know how Francis talked about belief, how, how powerful the mind is with beliefs. What you believe you did, you now believe it's being done to you in the world. In other words, whatever you believe you did in your mind, that attack, that separation from God, is now acted out. The ego has generated a hallucination, except now what you think you de did is being done to you. The thing that your neighbor is acting out in your perception, if you roll it back to the mind, you first have to believe you did it before they can seem to do it. The ego doesn't want you to see that. The ego is going to say, no, they're just plain wrong. They're disrespectful, they're not loving, they're arrogant, they're snobbish. You know, it's going to fling all kinds of justifications to try to make you think that they're the cause of the upset, that they're to blame, that they're actually to blame. But what Jesus is doing with all of us, he's calling us back into that movie theater and he's saying, no, no, come back. What you think you did, you didn't do. And what is that but the belief in separation? He's, he is a way shower. The reason Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life is because he had a, 
a total realization that the separation from God was impossible. And he didn't even mind if it cost him the whole world. He would rather remember the kingdom of heaven. He would rather remember the divine love of our creator than futz around with a bunch of images. He wasn't concerned about the disappearance of the universe. He wasn't concerned about leaving this world behind because he found the truth. And that's what it says in the Bible, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. That's where we come back to free will. We see our will and God's will are the same. We see that, that love is part of our divine will, not attack, justifying blame, justifying guilt, those things. So I mean, every one of you that has been speaking up on this profound weekend has been offering a gift because as Francis told you, Sylvia, you, just by you sharing it, just by you offering that up, just by you opening up, you, you gave your gift. And you showed all of us that we can do the same. We don't have to hide these secret private thoughts. We don't have to hide these issues. I love everything that you're sharing because you're pouring your heart out. You're not leaving anything back back, you're pouring it all on the table. You're just saying, here's what's going on, here's what I'm experiencing, here's what I'm facing, here's what I'm feeling, I'm going to be transparent, I'm not going to hide anything, I'm not going to pretend that things are good if I don't feel good, I'm going to speak it up, I'm not going to hide anything. And that is a key to the healing. It's the transparency is the key. Because that transparency is basically saying, Holy Spirit, Jesus, I'm not going to hide anything from you. I'm not going to play a game and try to pretend something. This is it. Sometimes it's, it's raw, but this is what I am experiencing. And I have a prayer. I have a prayer to let go.